the other side. Now presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hello, guys. I'm so glad to be a part of this. This week, I was not the last week because we had a hurricane category one only, but still, it was a direct hit. We lost power, so I'm sorry I missed it last week. Um, but it's okay. We'll make up for it because we're making up for it because we have three amazing souls here with us. We have my son, Eric. Happy birthday, Eric. And we have a uh, wonderful medium and uh, energy healer, Michelle Gray. And we have our guest, Sarah Breskman Cosme. And I am so excited about this because I need to learn a lot about what she has to offer. She is a certified yes. master hypnotist, a level three QHHT practitioner, a la Dolores Cannon, um, a student of Dr. Brian Weiss, author of Amazon's number one best. Hot new release, A Hypnotist's Journey to Atlantis. I, I started out doing it. I don't know if I started out, but different. Also featured nationally, internationally on co- uh, podcast, radio, and Gaia TV. So I'm so happy to have you, Sarah and Michelle and Eric. Uh, well, take it away. Whoever wants to start. Sarah, it's, the mic is yours. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure. It's an honor. Yeah, this is awesome. This is a, we love Sarah. <laughs> we love us and Sarah. We do, we do. Eric does too. Eric yeah, does too. And he says yeah. he says thank you for the birthday wishes, Mama. He's he's just oh. given so much love around you, and he's very excited to be with everybody tonight. My ear is so warm, and when my ear is warm, he's up really close and very very ready to talk. Any messages you have for Sarah to uh, before she begins, Eric? <clears throat> Cute. Uh, oh, well, thanks, uh, Eric. Work. Work. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's, yeah, he's he's giving you a wink, Sarah. He thinks you're awful cute. Um, he, he's had his eye on you for a while. So I don't know how you. Maybe you can tell us before you started how you met Eric or how you found him or how that, because he says he's been eyeing you for a while. <laughs> well, I have actually, I have been watching this show since the Jamie Butler days and I have no idea how I stumbled upon it, honestly, but I really liked watching it because as a hypnotist doing all these past life regressions, mm-hmm. I found out all this information and I was looking for other avenues for other people that have found the similar, you know, information. And almost every time I would get the same thing from the show. Mm-hmm. So it's like I really mm-hmm. resonate with it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. A lot of validation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of validation. Yeah. 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 Well, he, awesome. shows, he shows like a, a fishing rod, like reeling you in. So <laughs> oh. this, is, this is very meant to be. Very oh, meant to be. Gosh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, I can tell oh. you how I got into yeah. this. Yeah, that would be awesome. Your whole journey, everything. My story yeah. is like everyone else's story. I got into it through suffering. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Suffering. Yeah. Yay. 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 Suffering. Go, go suffering. <laughs> yes. Woo-hoo. I know. But isn't that the doorway to enlightenment? You know, I must have chose, you know. Easy well, way. it's definitely <laughs> the correlated course. If you want to do the remedial, yeah. remedial course, that's different. But yeah, yeah, the remedial yeah. Course, it's all about suffering. You're right. Right. Yeah. So I was just a kid, like any other kid, but with all kinds of problems. I was really overweight. I had phobias and fears. I had trouble sleeping. I even had OCD where I would like open and close drawers, and I didn't know what was like wrong with me. But I actually was like a super manifesting hypochondriac. So anybody that had an issue, I could be around that person and manifest that issue. And I just, there was nothing I could really do about it. My problems got worse and worse. And so I went to. For example, what was one thing you manifested? Because I have a similar story. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, like, say a friend just something simple like say a friend had this really weird like boil on their face 
I would think about it and then I would get the boil, you know, something like that. I could manifest Mm -hmm. all kinds of things that I focused on. And I didn't realize that I was just, that I was tapped into manifesting, but I didn't know Mm -hmm. what was going on with me. And I went to the story. Is I was watching as a kid in high school, and I was watching Marcus Welby, and this kid had something called idiopathic thrombocytopenia pinea purpura. So anyway, it's where you have a very low platelet count. So I went into the dining room where my dad, who was a surgeon, practiced the guitar, and I said, what's ITP? And he told me, and the next day, I got ITP. And had oh, my God. So yeah, wow. but, you know, that's a lot of bad shit, but guess what? People who can do that can manifest the good shit too. So go ahead. Exactly. Oh my gosh. So I went to, that's such a good example. Just like that's what happens to so many people and they don't realize it. But I went yeah. to traditional therapy because I really wanted to stop all these issues. And yeah. I was in traditional therapy for about 10 years and none of my problems really seemed to get any better. In fact, talking about them, sometimes they got worse. But because I wasn't around other people that had any other um, avenues of healing people, I just thought the only way I could heal somebody or help people was to become a psychologist because I thought I want to be, you know, a therapist or a psychologist to help somebody the way I've been helped, even though none of my problems really were cured. So Mm -hmm. I went to college to become a psychologist. That was my plan. I was mm. all gung ho because mm-hmm. I was born. I was born with this deep desire to help other people. I guess a lot of people have that. They're just born and they just want well, to help everyone. everyone. <laughs> Maybe not. not everyone. Yeah, not everyone. And that's true. Only but, the guns for punishment, girl. Yes, yes, that's, <laughs> yep, that was me. So yeah. I went to college, and a really crazy thing happened to me. About a couple months after I started college. I went back home to my family's house to um, go for Thanksgiving back home. And my family has this mirror right when you walk into the foyer. And I, as I'm walking back into my family's house, I looked into, into the mirror and my jaw dropped. I could not believe what I saw staring back at me. While I was away for just a few months, I had forgotten to have all my problems. And I had lost about 25 pounds in just a few months, even though I was more than I'd ever eaten before with like, you know, pizza, you know, I was a freshman and I was, I had forgotten to have my sleep disorder. I'd forgotten to have OCD. I'd forgotten to have have all my fears. And it dawned on me like one of those aha moments. Oh my gosh, change my thoughts. And I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody about that. I just continued. I graduated. And then after graduation, I worked as a counselor as a ha- in a halfway house where my job was to like um you know hand give people their medication and counsel them this is before yeah. I was going to go to graduate school because that, that was still my plan to become a psychologist so the people I was I mean gung ho is uh, the wrong word I was so excited to help people and I learned so okay. much about these medications I think I got the top grade in my psychopharmacology class oh, I was so oh, <laughs> and and here I am, and I finally get to give them this medication, and these are people that had schizophrenia and all different kinds of issues, and mm-hmm. it took me less than a week to think that everything I learned was a lie, because no one got any better. I was, yeah. I was using all these techniques, this medication, and so they were drooling about 45 minutes after I would give them the medication. Mm-hmm. I would counsel them. They never got any better. And I thought, really? Is this it? I don't want to go to graduate school. So eventually, I quit that job. But I was there for quite a long time. And I got into hypnosis. And I started doing past life regression, lose weight, and quit smoking. And I became a master hypnotist in 2009. And it didn't take me long to realize that there was something really special about past life regression and I I some people could come in and have an issue and heal themselves with just one session and I wanted to do something that really worked so I studied with Dr. Brian Weiss in New York and then I did his method for quite a while and he's the nicest guy by the way and then after a while 
I I heard about Dolores Cannon and I took her class and that's when everything in me clicked. I thought, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. I am meant to do this work. It's like everything that I had, I've been looking for and I found QHHT. So I studied that and I got really good. And then um, I finally became a level three, which is the top level that you can get in QHHT. And before the quarantine, I was traveling around the world with Dolores' daughter, um, Julia Cannon, yeah. and I would assist in the classes. So that was my introduction to that. But where my book comes in has a lot to do with that because I needed a subject, someone I could hypnotize and videotape and take this to the class. And it I didn't want it to be a paying client because I knew I was going to have to show my whole class, you know, this video of somebody. And I didn't think anyone would want to pay to, you know, have this video submission. So I had to find a subject because they were having this QHHT level three class in Orlando. And I was kind of under the gun. So this is where my whole story comes in. So (laughs) I had... Then I had a group of friends that I would sit with after school and we would just watch our kids play on the playground. And you know, those people that you can tell they're really not into the same stuff you're into. So you just, yes. never bring, you never bring up anything spiritual. Oh yeah. You just play and never look on it and they start to back away. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to my life. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> So usually when people want to get a session with me, they come to me. I don't, you know, talk about all this stuff with other people because I'm respectful of their belief systems. I understand how important they are to each person. So when the student um, is ready, the teacher will come, in other words. Yes. That's right. Well, I was under the spot. I needed to find somebody. And for some reason, I asked my friend Jen. Now, Jen was a teacher at the school. She was just the opposite. She would describe, like, she was not the kind of person that you would have thought I should have asked. She was very intellectual. Um, When when we first started talking about whether or not she would be my, you know, subject for this, she had never heard of Dolores Cannon. She didn't know anything about, you know, past life regression or spirituality. The closest that she got to maybe the intro is that she was going to buy an Esther Hicks, Hicks book, but that was about it. That was, that was it. So mm-hmm. she agreed. I asked her if she would be my subject because I needed um, someone to hypnotize for my class. And she looked at me so funny. And she said, are you serious? That's what you do because I've been looking for something like this. <laughs> and Whoa. she said, she hadn't told anyone at the school except only her husband knew that she was dealing with a very serious brain condition called mm. pseudotumor cerebri. Oh, and yeah. basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it Lashing was mimicking. All that. Yeah. Yes. And so she was working closely with this team of specialists at the University of Miami. And they yeah. had her on this heavy duty medication and yeah. really her prognosis was not good and the medication was so uncomfortable for her that she could oh. hardly take it. She had severe swelling in her brain. So when I told her that what QHHT was, that it was this journey inwards where you can really reconnect with yourself and find out who you are, you know, your past life possibly, and you could even heal your body. She said, Oh my gosh, I will totally do it because I don't want to die, you know, and she said, I will be your subject. So here I had a a gun. Sarah, 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 before you go on to what happened with her, would you mind uh, sharing with the class what exactly QHHT is? Because a lot of people might not know, even though uh, the acronym is. I should have. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes. No, that's Um, all me. Short short for quantum healing hypnosis technique and it was developed by Dolores Cannon and so it's similar to past life regression okay got it so but when hypnosing you to another life it could be a future life I guess right yes could be anywhere 
Uh, and, and, and healing through that. And learning how to heal yourself with the knowledge from another life. Is that what it is? Well, I basically, okay, basically what it is, I mean, there's a woo-woo aspect to it, but there's also a scientific aspect to it. In oh, hypnosis, oh. It's, yeah, in hypnosis, it's really just focus, concentration. So hypnosis been, has been used, you know, for so many years, many um, investigators use it to regress people, to have them focus back to the time where they can recall, you know, the scene of an accident or something. Right. So it's not, right. it's not all woo woo, but no. it is woo woo in a sense that these sessions are so divinely planned and right. you can heal yourself easily in these sessions because I'll tell you why, <laughs> because the body is a messenger. So what I've learned and, and what Dolores learned and, and uh, Julia Cannon also talks about this all the time is that the body will send you a message through whatever issue you have in your body. Say, um, for instance, yeah. your right knee hurts. That's usually moving, not you know, something going on right now because it's the right side because the body's completely literal. So uh, an issue with moving forward, say. Um, the body is so literal. Side and, and there's the masculine side and all that, yeah. Yeah, right. so it's just once you understand or once the message is heard, the issue can instantly be released and healed because it was simply just a message for you. And the body's always trying to help you. It's not trying to go against you, you know, to kill you. And oh. cancer is like a huge um call to action it's like oh you really you know need to look at this and, and pain is something that calls your attention to look right. at it and so QHHT works so well because because you're doing this focusing inwards this deep dive inwards you can get the messages easily and as you're you're uh, quieting that part of your brain that incessantly talks constantly and doubts and filters you're able to uncover this information so after Jen's first session, she completely healed, and she went back to her um, specialist at the University of Miami, and they could not believe it. They said, That's wow. impossible. this is a miracle. We don't understand, especially because she stopped taking her medication. But actually, what had happened was that the, tum the pseudo tumor was just for her to come see me. It, we were so divinely set up by the universe, because yeah. what we... What we found out in our first session was that, and this is somebody who did not know about Atlantis or Lemuria or any of this stuff. She, when I regressed her, she went back to this lifetime as a female leader in Lemuria. And she was going to be the, one of the rulers there, but she was taken as a prisoner by the Atlanteans and she lived in a prison in Atlantis for 60 years. And the information that started coming out was so important for humanity. So anyway, so we find this out. She healed herself. And Jen was told, her higher self told her, look, the purpose of your existence is to get this information out. We also learned that through this regression that she had tried this before in the 70s. She got this information out through another hypnotist. And wow. she tried to share it. She was called crazy. She was lobotomized. And she ended up killing wait, herself. Jen? Jen? Who, Jen? Wait, what? Oh, and Sorry, the yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, Jen, had tried, Jen had tried to do this before. She had tried to oh, recover this information in before. In another incarnation, right? Yes, in another life oh, in wow. the 70s. Wow. Yeah. So this is her next life in a linear fashion. So, yeah. Um, so she, this is her next life where she's here to share all this information again and get all this information out. And we, we've learned that we were supposed to do this together. We were supposed to get all this information out. And so we decided to work together more. And, oh, my gosh, what was so interesting is that I thought she was going to go. I told her subconscious or her higher self. Sorry, just to give you the backstory, when you do a QHHT session, you ask to speak with the person, subconscious or higher self. It's the part of them that knows everything. It's the right. part of them that you talk to that can easily heal them or give you information about anything. So right. I asked her higher self to take her to the beginning of the story, the story that we were supposed to uncover. And mm. we didn't 
I thought we were going to go to her childhood in Lemuria, and she didn't go there. She went as a commander on an extraterrestrial ship coming to Earth for the very first time, and they crashed their ship. And, oh, oh my gosh, all the information that we learned, we had no idea before we did this. I had even asked Jen if she believed in aliens before, you know, doing this, and she said she didn't think so. But we both had a different idea of aliens after that session. So we learned quite a lot. Yeah, I want to tell you that a lot of people are nudged to uh, to these particular shows based on their needs. And I bet you anything this means that a lot of people who are listening right now have galactic roots, number one, and number two, need some help with QHHT. Eric, am I wrong? I mean, what percentage of the listeners here? Um, uh, no, Mom, you're not wrong. He says you're not wrong, and he's pointing to every single one of you, and he says every single one of you would get benefit from this. Yeah. Every single one of you. And and I'll just, like, I'm sure, actually, Sarah, you can go on because I'm getting so excited because Eric's giving me messages <laughs> and giving me all this information. Um, so finish your story and then I'll say it afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we started pulling all this information and what was really crazy was that, I shouldn't even use the word crazy anymore. It happens so much. I just say just normal, divine yeah. intervention. The new, but the new normal. All these clients mm-hmm. started coming to my office <clears throat> sharing similar stories. They were either an extraterrestrial crashing or they mm-hmm. were on Lemuria or Atlantis during the same time period. And at first I thought it was just a coincidence. And I thought, well, maybe every QHH practitioner has tons of people talking about this time period but then I realized no and the purpose was because I was supposed to share it so I shared it in my book a hypnotist journey to Atlantis but Jen I want to want to let you guys know that Jen also has a book and it's called child of the universe by JLF Sullivan and wow. that's like her story as well but um so anyway we we learned so much about this time period. And this is, we were uncovering this information years before what's going on now. So I'll get into what's going on that's pretty much uh, repeating. So, and that's one of the reasons why so many of us are here on the earth right now is to release this trauma from these, um, from these uh, lifetimes, from the, the lifetime the in Atlantis. Atlantean ones, et cetera. Yeah, I know. I yeah. had a lot of trauma, and Eric and the whole suicide tree roots began in Atlantis um, for, for me and my family and Eric, et cetera. So, and those patterns will keep going and going and going until you address them. The universe is exactly. telling us address, address, address. And, and of course, um, Sarah, that's what you're here to help us with. And the universe is helping us address them because we're being triggered nonstop by the current events. So I'll tell you what right. what we learned. So, um, so she, I was always wondering, you know, why? So at, let me back up. So she was, um, she lived. She started out in her past life. She lived in this beautiful place, Lemuria. Everybody was so compassionate. They were very plant based. They just had so much love for one another it was such a beautiful existence and women were the dominant rulers and as i've regressed like so many people i've learned that in prehistory women were the rulers because they had an innate ability to know which plants would kill you which plants wouldn't and they had a way of rule of ruling or leading that was very compassionate so in this matriarchal society lemuria Jen was being groomed to be the leader in that society. And then the Atlanteans destroyed their continent, which not not everyone knew that during the time. They just knew that they were being destroyed through a tidal wave, a flood. And Jen was taken to Atlantis and lived the 60 years as a prisoner there. But I had always wondered, why would the Atlanteans go to a place like Lemuria? Atlantis was this very... um, they were very advanced. They had all this technology. Why would they go to this place that didn't have as much technology? And um, 
the reason why they didn't have the technology in Lemuria, I explained in the book because I found out that they they splintered off and uh, it explains it in great detail. But I was curious, why would the Atlanteans go to Lemuria? And the reason was there was this really deadly virus in Atlantis and it oh. was killing so many people. And a lot of my clients that would be regressed to Atlantis, they would see smog or they would, you know, have trouble seeing the sky. It would be, it would look, you know, hazy. And yeah. I always was curious. So apparently they had this deadly virus in Atlantis and they came to Lemuria because they wanted to know why the Lemurians had this special immunity. There was some reason why the Lemurians weren't getting sick. And so they kept pestering them to give them these special crystals. That was the reason why the Lemurians oh. were not getting sick. And the Lemurians said no. And so they took Jen, destroyed them, taking Jen, thinking that she would tell them how to get this immunity. So meanwhile, they developed this jab. I have to say jab because I don't want your thing to get down, even though I'm talking about the jab in Atlantis. But right. the jab in Atlantis. and they made it differently then. It was like a split in the arm, and they put this genetic material in, and they covered it up with a putty. It seemed like a huge success. People were able to travel again, you know, go out of their houses. There was a huge quarantine before this jab was um, wow. was well, mandated. Familiar. Yes, and there's a purpose for that. So everybody had to take the jab. But it wasn't a jab. It was a split. But still. Um, and that looked like such a huge success. In fact, in a lot, not that many clients um, talked about the quarantine, but I had one client in particular who talked about this being in a quarantine. And I didn't even know that it was Atlantis at the time because I had nothing to reference it. But I really right. believe it was later. But um, anyway, so um, it looked like a huge success until – the first set of babies started being born with animal side effects. And the reason they had animal side effects was they used um, animal DNA to create this jab. And what is it, the animal side effects? So, okay, some were born with animal parts, like they would be like oh, okay. cat-like, um, oh. or they would have like fur, and um, some would have like uh, tails, um, gills, or so you know how some people are pale? Yeah. That's from that. That is flowing lightly in our genes still. So yeah. it's because of the side effects from the jab in Atlantis. So anyway, so wow. it, so it looked like it was it it looked like it wasn't that big of a deal that these children were being born with these side effects. Some were missing limbs. It, it was it was bad, but it seemed like it was still okay until those children started growing up and yeah. they could not fit into a society that was um, very judgmental. And so yeah. these children who became adults started becoming violent. And this is where my journey to it, hit, uh, you know, Atlantis comes in. So my job when I would go with um, Dolores Cannon's daughter, Julia Cannon, uh, to these classes is that I would assist in the classes and some people would regress me so they could practice on me. Well, we were doing this regression in front of the class in Miami and, um, you know, just somebody was able to bond, uh, you know, the hypnotist to regress me and I learned that I was a judge and I had mm -hmm. never known where my um, part of this was. I didn't know that I had such a huge role. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Yeah, sure. But um, yeah, but I didn't know. And apparently I was a judge and my job was to decide, this is terrible, but my job was to decide who would stay in Atlantis and who would go. And yes. I would search through these case files. And if the person was too violent to stay in Atlantis, they were sent to this island, which is apparently right out my window. I live on the water in the Florida Keys. I didn't know there was uh, a reason for me to be here until wow. I did this session. So yeah. I was told that they were sent to this island and they were given, you know, um, resources, but they weren't. They were sent to the island and they were killed. 
So, oh. so many people have memories of being killed. And so many me- people have memories of their children being taken away from them who had these animal side effects. So right. after um, quite a long time, the Atlantean government realized that these children had some sort of abilities and that instead of killing them, they would test them. And so they, which is these side effects look like they were so devastating. There's always a divine purpose to everything. Oh, so, yeah. so even if something looks like it's so terrible, and if you think about the current events right now, um, and it's not all bad. There is always a divine purpose. So the divine purpose of this jab experiment was for the for the uh, abilities. So these children, especially the cat children, the cat people, they had very special abilities where they could read crystals, they could tap into the ley lines, and they could understand information. And apparently there's many people that are back right now that still carry those abilities from that lifetime. And they can put a crystal up to their head and read the crystal or tap into ley lines. And so, um, so they were able to use those people and they developed a special energy. So anyway, long story short, we get all this information and then we start to notice our surroundings here. All of a sudden there's a quarantine. All of a sudden there's a jab. All of a sudden there's an old leader, a new leader. And we thought, oh my gosh, what is happening? And we learned well, history. I mean, the first time. History is repeating itself. It's flu. I, I think the universe has been trying to tell us something for a lo- for for generations and generations and generations, and now we're at the COVID. Um, right. Yes. So history repeats itself until we learn the lesson, but exactly. that's not a bad thing in a sense because if we are at this point again, because history. Um, evolves in cycles, then we're doing so much better now than we were back then. We're such a different society now. We're not judgmental like we were, you know, as judgmental. We're making a lot of strides. So there's a lot of, it's every time a higher self, you know, anytime someone's asking a question about how we're doing, I always hear we're doing great. Everything's right on target. Everything's great. Everything's looking great. I never hear the doom and gloom aspect of anything it's quite the opposite i think if you do my work you really realize that there isn't anything to worry about at all that we're just here to release this fear what's the worst gonna happen let me ask you something what kind of thing can you help i've I've got a young man jacob his father's name is diego i don't know if they're listening i'm not going to give the last name who has a problem with addiction and i want to help him so do you think that QHHT, I mean, something tells me that that could help him? Oh, my gosh, of course. I think a lot of people, it's really hard for a lot of people because there's so much chaos. And people's yeah. attention are are being, like, uh, you know, pulled in so many different directions. But are there's there so any, many. Is there any illness or, or condition or disorder or ailment, et cetera, that, that QHHT cannot um, of course, there's irrevocable contract, and there's you know, this, you know there's free will and all that. But are there any things that definitely QHHT cannot help? Um, it's not advisable to do QHHT if you have schizophrenia, just because yeah. it's difficult to know uh, what the truth, or the reality is, or not. But that's about it. I mean, it definitely helps with addictions. Yeah, schizophrenia could be just negative entities, just uh, just the, making them yeah. appear to be schizophrenic, mm-hmm. or other things like that. So yeah, I, I can imagine. You know what's yeah. interesting is that I was asking one time why people, why there's so much mental illness, and they said that it's really hard to fit your energy into a body, into a human body, and sometimes people can't fit their energy into their bodies, and there are leaks. And the leaks oh. cause yeah. cause mental illness. And to try to uh, just, you know, just 
uh, focus on putting your whole, you know, your energy in the body and sealing it up is what I was told. But there's so many reasons for mental illnesses. I mean, sometimes people choose it to learn something through them or, they're, you know, like a contract or just so oh, many yeah. different reasons or just trauma. Well, I, mean, I think what would be really kind of cool is for us to do a Zoom session for on someone to put on YouTube, yeah. you showing mm-hmm you know, your work and healing and then following that along. And then Paula, the documentary filmmaker is, you know, is, is the one that's going to be following people's stories because people love stories and just seeing, okay, they had QHHT on day, whatever, let's check in with them in a month. Let's check in with them in, you know, three months, all that kind of stuff. And just follow it along. That'd be interesting. Well, the Lord's canon QHHT. to Lisa. <laughs> Eric, well, Eric nudged it because he's clapping his hands because that's what he was saying about doing a, a video, but putting the work together. Yes. That's that's exactly what I want to do, too, which is so funny. Um, but QHHT, Dolores Cannon's QHHT cannot be done um, online, but I can easily do my own uh, regression because I have so much experience with so many different regressions. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, can, right. can you get somebody on Zoom? Um, face-to-face and regress them and I, I can record it? Oh, yeah, definitely. See, that's interesting and, and you know, because she's also doing a, a thing on scalar energy to, to make that a combination. We take somebody like Jacob, do the scalar energy and QHHT as a combo um, thing for that person. By the way, people, I want to let you know there's a lot of earth angels out there that seem to be nudged to Atlanta Scalar. And, and and Michelle and I have decided that we want to do a radio show just for you mm-hmm. guys. Come forward and talk and share experiences. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think that would be a good plan. And, and for you to help with the he- with healing some of these people that come to me um, to be healed. I mean, Michelle, you're an awesome healer. It would be awesome to also have other tools like um, like Sarah in the pot. I don't want to call you a tool. I just call Sarah a tool. I don't mean it. That <laughs> well, this is this is exactly it though because I, I like I gotta say something now because it's just bubbling at the top of yeah, my now throat here. Michelle and Eric, go ahead. Now, now Eric and I just have to say this. So, as as you're talking, Sarah, and so Eric has already been saying to me, he's showing me, he's going back and forth. So he's going to you, Sarah, and then he goes back to his mom, and then back and forth, and he's pointing. Atlantis Scalar, and then <laughs> UHHT. Atlantis. He's like going back and forth, and he says Atlantis, so he keeps pointing to Atlantis, the name Scalar, and then going back. and I'm, I'm watching him do this as you're talking, and he's like, "Get it? Get it? Get it? Do you get it?" I'm, I'm not he's like, uh, get I, me. Somebody regressed me to times of Atlantis for some reason before I was even before Eric was even alive. You know, yeah. uh, well, actually, he was 18 months old, and we, we got a boat, and we called it Atlantis. And he was, you know, wow. 18, wow. Hours, 18 hours old, he was on in the boat with us. So there's, there's a connection wow. there. Well, there's right, so, definitely a connection, definitely. And like one other good. thing just to tell you, that when you were talking, um, I wrote down a couple things here because he was talking so fast. I was trying to write it down so I didn't forget it all, but um, – he said, um, so he was showing a connection because when you were talking about Atlantis and Lemuria and everything, I was like, okay, Eric, how are you involved in this? I know you are. I know we all, I know that there's so much more to all of this and why this is happening. And he's like, of course. And so he said he was involved with the justice system and that you helped him. <gasps> and not no five way. minutes later, you say that you're a judge. I'm like, oh my God, of course. You can That's hear me after wow. you say, you hear me go, <gasps> Yeah, I heard that. Gosh. Yes. Wow. So he says that, um, and more of this will come out because he's saying, he's like, be patient, Michelle, because I started to get all excited. I'm like, what else? What else? What else? <laughs> and, um, but he said, uh, so right now, everything that's coming together, and he's talking, he's saying, Mom and, and Sarah, Michelle, he goes, all of us doing this work together in this combination because he says, Mom, we've been looking for ways to help um, give awareness to help people really bring their healing 
uh, uh, forward because there's, wow. you know, different people that are having their work done with the Atlanta scaler that need that little bit of awareness around something or to move through something to really yeah. give, he says, like, step on the gas with that energy that's been brought in for healing. And right. so um, he's just saying, like, this is the perfect combination. He says there's all, because just like we are all different, we all have different energies and, and contracts and different needs and things that we need. So all of these different values together of healing are so important. And so what he said was the whole purpose to this and happening right now is a repeat from the Atlantean time and what had occurred because he says it's for justice, humanity, healing, and truth for the purpose of change. Wow. Wow. Because wow. Like, like 98% of scalar services are successful, but 2% are not. Yes. And this, because yes. there's free will and there's people's beliefs yes. and all that, because thought creates reality. And I'm, my yes. intense, that was mm-hmm. their intent in the scalar field. Right. So this could be the, 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 the perfect marriage for people who, you know, need. Exactly. To, yeah. All right. So, exactly. first of all, I'd like to take callers. But first, I want to make sure that, um, that Sarah, you share how people can get in touch with you, number one. And number two, the name of the two books, yours and Jen's. So people can get in touch with me um, through my website, www.vtheholistichypnotist.com. And there are also practitioners that do QHHT all over the world. So if you're, you know, if you need somebody in your area, you need somebody now, um, you can go to QHHTofficial.com and look in your area. There's a ton of practitioners all over. Um, And you can get my book um, called A Hypnotist's Journey to Atlantis on Amazon, either in Kindle, um, paperback, or uh, Audible. And you can also buy Jen's book on Amazon, and her book is Child of the Universe by J.L.F. Sullivan. But I just wanted to say really quick that the reason why I wrote this book is because I know that people can read this book and heal themselves. And Mm -hmm. I think that every, okay, I'm just going to say every author reads their Amazon reviews. Okay, I think so. (laughs) I did. And (laughs) on my reviews, there was someone that read it and they healed themselves or they healed someone in their family. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, that was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to write this book because I know someone could read it, even hear about this information, and it heals a part of them. They understand the justice, like Eric said, about what happened to their children or what happened to yeah. them, and it releases so much of this trauma. Um, I know for my own self that I have been healed just from hearing somebody else's story. So that is the biggest reason why I wrote this. And I hope people can find healing and peace going through our current events with this book. That's wonderful. I have a dear dear friend, Lambert, last name, starts with S. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to help. And he's in a wheelchair and he's in a lot of pain and all that kind of stuff. And I just wondering if maybe you can help. Maybe we can use him. In a Zoom, he's been actually a host of I mean, a guest on the radio show. Maybe we can set up mm-hmm. some session where we can help him. Anyway, I'll let sure. you think about that, Sarah. But, um, sure, that would be great. That would be a great example. He's just a lovely person, and he's in my he soul. Is. Lovely yeah. person. So, um, you would love him. All right, so can we take um, can we take callers and uh, you know answer questions for them, Sarah and Eric and Michelle? Sure. Yeah. All right. I want to let everybody know that it is Eric's birthday, and it's kind of been a rough time for me, um, Mm -hmm. because you know I I miss him, and um, I want you to send my family prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Love love and prayer. Um, and it never gets each year. It's it's supposed to get better, but it doesn't. I mean, he's my twin flame, so. I also want you yeah. guys to know where all this started from. It started from a pull of a trigger that took my boy's life. And then Jeremy yeah. Eric was born, and then and Lena Skater was born. So please, when you want to email me and bitch because the work is not done in a timely manner or whatever, if you want to complain, please think about that. Please think about that before you send any hate or insult titled emails because I get a lot of them 
and it's very difficult because I want people to remember where it all started, okay? It started from pain, my pain. Anyway, yeah. done with that. All right, so let's take somebody for the 210 area code. Hey there, how you doing? Hi, Elisa. Happy birthday to Eric and Elisa. I love you as always. You are Mama Med, who is to me and my family. You know that. Uh, this mm-hmm. is Jenny from San Antonio. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Sending you rich blessings, all of you ladies. Um, but I do have a quick question. But first, before I ask, I want to say thank you for all the work y'all do. Y'all are amazing. And I do appreciate oh. it from the bottom of my heart. My family and I do always. We thank owe you, you everything, Elisa. We do. Thank um, you. I don't know about that, but, but, um, yeah, you, we, you don't, when y'all help people, you don't realize how much you help people. And apparently y'all don't to do that. You know how much I love you. I, I send that to you. So, um, but anyways, I, I do want to ask a quick question. Um, it's going to be for Michelle. Um, I mm-hmm. I just took in my 78-year-old mother, year, mother-in-law. She had a stroke in May. Um, my husband and I took her in. It's his mom. And uh, we're caring for her because she had a stroke in a stressful environment from another uh, sibling. So we're mm. doing the care and things like that for her, but we have another sibling making threats, making her life a living hell, my husband's life a living hell. But... Um, I'm asking, I guess my question to you is, are these threats legitimate? Because I've told her to quit, and if she really wants to pursue, then get a lawyer, because I know I haven't done anything wrong. Um, but she's just making life more difficult for my mother-in-law, and I don't want her to get another stroke. So do oh. I? are these threats are that she's making and accusations, is this going to pursue, or is it just her just running her mouth? That way I can have a little bit relief, and I kind of can yeah. give that to my mother-in-law. Yeah. Eric, um, he answered before you finished there, and he just said, um, it's the change. So the whole change, and there's like a loss of control there. And yeah. also he says that there's some stuck energy that they have. And so he said, no, it, it is going to peter itself off because he says that that energy that they project, that to continue it going, he says it has to have um, – attention paid to it and has to be able to bounce back to grow. Yeah. And he says otherwise it will continue to die down. So he like, says as hard as it is to hear it right now, as difficult as it is to hear it right now, he said um, the best thing you could do is let it bounce off because he yeah. says it will stop because when they don't get the responses that they're looking for, it's going to end. But he says that they have difficulty with change. Yeah. They're having trouble with that. Um, he also says, you know, do the opposite. And he says, turn around and bless them with some love. He goes, oh, I, hardest, thing, hardest thing to do, but keep doing that. Keep doing yeah. that. Oh, I, I've let him know. I, I wish them the best in life. And I, I just, yeah. I think that's what we can do. My husband and I just kind of regenerate our power and kind of manifest that's it the right. way we want. But. That's yeah, right. I, I just okay. that that gives some relief. So yes, I yeah. I do appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. You're welcome. So, thank, you. thank you. Take sweetie. care. I love San Antonio. Many a time by yeah. the river, and on the van by the river, mm-hmm. like in, that's oh, you guys you know Southern Live know that. All right, so four four three area code. Hi there. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing tonight? Good. How can we help you, sweetie? Yeah. And that's great. My name is Suzanne. I'm calling from Maryland. I want to say happy birthday to Eric. Happy oh, birthday to Eric you. for mom. And thank you. um oh, you're welcome. I just um wondered if Eric or any of my guys or anybody have any guidance for me that would be for my highest good. Hmm. And I want to know about Atlantis more. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need Eric. a regression too. <laughs> Eric's raising his eyebrows to you, like giving you the hi, hey. Yeah. He's like putting his eyebrows up and down. Um, so he he's just saying that um, he goes, what we want you to know is he says um, indecision. So um, he says making decisions. He says practice with your intuition. He's like, and he says practice in your body. Practice in your body with making decisions. He says it will really help you. Um, I don't yeah, know if you're getting reactions. About, yeah, like there's, okay. he says there's a lot of um, back and forth with making decisions. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So he just says, focus on whatever you're trying to sort out. And he says, and sit with it in your body because your body is speaking to you. Your body is giving you a lot of response. And he says, we work with your body. Pay attention to that. And that's going to help you tighten up your energy. Okay. You know, uh, there, that makes there's, a lot sense. Of, there's something to be said to practicing listening to your body that I've I've learned from someone that you can practice the yes or no questions that you already know the answer to, and, and ask mm-hmm. your higher self, mm-hmm. and my, my I don't know where purple, and see what feeling you get. Maybe it's an yeah. up and down sensation in the pranic tube. I mean, yeah. there's everybody does it differently, but if you practice that on a daily basis, you can kind of really yeah. learn how to talk. Your heart. It's it's your absolutely amazing. It's amazing. I have tried Eric, it a little bit, but I haven't been successful yeah. to this point. But I haven't done it for a while again. So I know. And I, it, I, well, I Eric says it. pay attention to the subtleties too, because okay. sometimes it can be a very subtle sensation. And he says don't do it when you have like multi amounts of things going on. And and like this is something that Eric had worked with me and taught me. But in the beginning it was so subtle that I would have to stop everything and like really pay attention to ask the questions. But now, you know, I'll be in the grocery store and I'll be like, okay, should I go this way or this way? And I can just work it in my body no matter what I'm doing because it's, it's part of your, you know, your system. So you get better and better mm-hmm. at it. So he says, it really no make sure that you're calm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Practice. Yeah. So just practice so that what is subtle ceases to be subtle. Right. Yeah. And, right, right, right. I didn't need to do that too. Okay. <laughs> I'm not very good about that. Because I just don't you know how to spend time. Whatever. All right, that's yeah. great. Oh, does she have any Atlantean roots, Eric, or Galactic roots or anything? Oh, oh. of course he says yes. Yes. Uh, oh yes. yes. You yes. certainly do. You um, he's talking that's about awesome. you you being um he's the feline. He keeps showing the cat with you. Oh. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Huh. So, lines and crystals and cool. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. All right, good. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see here. Our next caller, the eight one eight area code. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the show. It's an honor to have you. Who are you, and where are you calling from? And what do you think about your mother? I'm kidding. Oh, no. The person dropped the call. They dropped. Oh, maybe oh. that was a mess up. Uh, we'll look for you, 818 area code. All right, so 651 area code. Aren't you the lucky boy or girl? Hi, Hi there. You? Hi, Hi. Hi, my name is Addie, and I'm from Minnesota. Hi, Addie, Minnesota. Lots of my Norwegian relatives over there, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. I, hi, Elisa. I love you so much. We've spoken on email so much. Uh, I, I am Norwegian in descent, so thank wow. you. Um, I love you so much. I love you, Let's, Michelle. I love you, Sarah. Stay, love stay, you away from stay away from the lutefisk. It's all about penis shit. I'm kidding. Go ahead. I'm Yes, 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 that is correct. (laughs) Um, And also, happy birthday, Eric. I love you so much. You're gorgeous in all that you are. Um, I'm just wondering if I can get a special message from Eric today. That's all I'm asking for. Mm. Mm, He says a special special message for you with a bow on top. He says is what you get. Um. (laughs) He says to you, he says, you know, this is going to be uh, a simple, short and sweet message, but has a lot of power to it, which he says, perseverance. He says, keep going forward. He says, don't give up. And he's talking about what it is that you want, what it is that you're putting into, because um, he says it's it's in your relationships but it's also in what you want for yourself. He says, in the back of your mind, he goes, what's in the back of your mind? Keep going forward. Keep going through it. Because he says that there's more to this than what you realize. Eric, can you help her and her guides? Uh, Can you all help her? He's already there. He's already there. 
It's already oh, there. Nice. That's sweet. Is there any is there anything <laughs> crap you can tell her? Um, like tomorrow morning I'm gonna get up and anything like that? He says, or, or he says don't don't listen to other people. He says don't listen to other people. Pay attention to yourself. Don't listen to uh, what other people say around you. He says, pay very close attention to what it is that you feel. And he says, uh, let other people have their opinions. Yes, filter out the okay. noise, baby. Awesome. Oh, I, I, that's wonderful. Oh, I found out some the A one eight error code. Don't go. Oh my God, you dropped again. Get back on, girl. Oh, boy, <laughs> I see you. Get back on. Oh, they dropped again. All right. Maybe they changed their mind. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for calling. Happy birthday, and Elisa, I have an email to send to you. I was up early this morning for his birthday, and I have an orb of the full moon. It, it, he's, he's, he's in a video with an orb oh. on the full moon. I'm going to send it wow. to you. I've been trying to get it to you, so I will send that to you today. Oh, thank you, Happy darling. Happy birthday, Eric. Thank you. That would yeah, be a wonderful you. present for him and for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love you all. Thank you. Love you too. Love you. Oh, she sounds so special. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. He eight one eight one eight zero. <laughs> go. There you are. Uh, hi there. How you doing? You made it. Don't don't touch any buttons on your phone. Hi there. Hello. Got you back on. Hi, sweetie. I I I wanted you to get area code five five one two two nine. Five five one. Well, I see eight one eight. Yeah, oh, but five, I just wanted okay, you to go to that okay, caller. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, five five one five 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 six. Five five one. I have five five one five five six. After that. That's the only one that I believe so, but I have her number differently. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Um. All right. Uh, let me see if I can find it's that. It's a 515. Oh. Yes. Yes. All right. I'll yes. see you on two. 515. Very good. Hi there. How are you doing? Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi. I'm Lisa from Iowa. I'm not. I'm 515. Oh. Oh, my God. I I don't know. I don't see a 519 area code and the 818 area code. Um. Anyway, go ahead. How can we help you? Well, I just always say, well, first of all, happy birthday, Eric and Mama. I feel your pain. Yeah. Um, but, anyway, but so my condolences to you. Thank um, you. I just always said if I got on, um, I would ask for my stepdad to give a message to my mom. His name's Don. Don? Okay. What's his last initial? And what's your mother in here? Ruth. Whoa, well, gotta make a quick, quick message. Mm. Holding his commitment is what's coming through. There's okay, love coming God. through. He's holding his commitment, and he's talking about her purpose here in life and his commitment to her. All right, sounds like um, we need more time for that one because I'd like <laughs> to find out what, what her purpose is. So yeah, maybe that was can, my question. Yeah. Call in next time and um, remind me, email me, emedges at gmail.com, and I will find you on the studio board, okay? Well, bless your heart. Um, thank, you. thank you. Sure, sweetie. Anyway, Michelle at the healingh-art.com. Check her out. And, of course, Sarah, who's at the holisticpractitioner.com. And um, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, Sarah, I will get back in touch with you about setting up some Zoom sessions and, you know, getting some information so you can be, if you want to, part of the Atlanta Scaler Healing Team. Cool. Yay. <laughs> Woo. Right. Yay. All right. Thank you, everybody. I love you. And happy birthday, Eric. Love you. I miss you so much. Bye. Yeah, Lisa, I love you so much, Mom. Love you, Lisa. Love you, Sarah. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love Good night, you everybody. Good night.